congratulations to all of you for this, uh, I would call it a major achievement to have the first center of excellence in Norway in the realm of health. And uh, I think it's uh, really appropriate that the first center is directed, focused on exactly what you're discussing now, the sustainable development goals. It's time to increase our efforts to uh, reach the ambitions embedded in these goals. I have a presentation here and uh, I hope it works. So, um, let's see if everything is in place here now, yeah. So, um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, exactly what you mentioned in your introduction, how the SDGs of the Sustainable Development Goals can serve as an inspiration and uh, as uh, guidelines for how we develop the education in the time to come. I must say at the very beginning that uh, it's, uh, it calls for humility to see how the current crisis, COVID-19, has um, revealed significant voids in our knowledge as to how to uh, care for people in a crisis and not least those that are particularly vulnerable. And uh, I think that uh, it must be a major effort of any university to see how we can fill these voids in our knowledge and ensure that we are better prepared next time around when a crisis hits. Um, I even re uh, referred to a commentary that we had in uh, Nature Medicine just a few days ago, uh, a, a commentary that could serve as a prelude to the discussion that we're going to have today. And uh, what uh, I think we all agree on is that uh, COVID-19, with all the it involves, it also has a silver lining because COVID-19 tells us in no uncertain terms that we have to look much more explicitly on the sustainable development goals and how we can possibly reach them within the time frame of 2030. In fact, uh, I think that uh, COVID-19 serves as a reminder as to how important the SDGs are. And also, in fact, uh, COVID-19 makes the um, sustainable development goals even more comprehensible for the society at large because COVID-19 serves as what we could call the great unveiler. It unveils all the inequities in society today that translates, in fact, into stark and uh, very challenging inequalities in health during this uh, pandemic. This is uh, from a paper that we just submitted to the British Medical Journal. And uh, we say exactly what also Abin uh, said, that COVID-19 serves as a lens that uh, unveils and magnify the inequities that we have in our society today, and that now translate or metamorphose into stark inequalities in health. And uh, I'm, when I prepared this lecture, I was reminded of my first experience as a very small and young boy when Martin Luther King got his Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And uh, he had a quote that has been with me over the last 10 years or so. And I think uh, this quote reminds us even today of uh, what we are up to when it comes to injustice in health. Of all the forms of inequality, he said in a speech, injustice in health is the most shocking and inhuman. And uh, this is a quote, I think, that should guide us in the years to come. Uh, in fact, what we are doing now, next week, is to have a conference at uh, Karolinska Institute on exactly this injustice, inequalities in health revealed by COVID-19. And as you can see from the picture, Anders Tegnell, uh, I guess he's known even in Norway, will uh, take part in, in this uh, discussion next week. I'm really looking forward to this. And we also have an author in the panel and an ethicist. So uh, as was pointed out in, in, in the introduction, when we really go for the ambitions that are embedded in SDGs, we have to work across discipline, not only across medical disciplines. We also have to engage all other parts of society to really achieve something significant in the perspective of the SDGs. As um, Sven Sterling, rector, uh, pointed out, in fact, my own engagement at KI's 
engagement, I would say, started with the uh, Lancet University of Oslo Commission that I was uh, chairing uh, a few years back in time. And I hope that many of my colleagues in this commission are following this uh, particular conference. I have so fond memories after having collaborated with my distinguished colleagues on this commission for so many years. And what we say in this commission is relevant, even more relevant today than it was uh, a few years ago. We must reach beyond the health sector to find effective solutions. We must work cross-sectorally and we must be humble. It's not just about medicine and, and healthcare. It's about the society at large. We have to include and engage all sectors in society to find effective solutions. For example, when it comes to filling the voids in of knowledge that have been unveiled during this particular crisis. So the Lancet Commission um, that looked at the political and commercial determinants of health and the political origins of health inequities is very much uh, in evidence, in fact, in the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which also, as uh, Sven Stern pointed out, sees health not only as something that is constrained to goal three, but as something that pervades most of the 17 goals, at least 14 of the 17 uh, goals have health very much in evidence when it comes to the ambitions that have to be reached for 2030. In the Lancet University of Oslo Commission, we came out with what we called dysfunctions in uh, the global governance system and in the governance system at large. And now we see that these dysfunctions, they play out before our eyes. For instance, that health, unfortunately, very often is subordinated to economic goals. See what happens in some societies today. One would like to open up society prematurely because of the economic outfall, the economic fallout of the uh, lockdowns and other health measures. Let's look at the policy, policy space for health. Look at how, in fact, the institutions that are set to uh, achieve and to um, ensure that uh, uh, health measures are being taken seriously, that they are sidelined by politics in this particular crisis. Uh, this is something that really is uh, uh, a very, very serious symptom of the current crisis. Look at the institutions that uh, often do not change when they need to change because of the knowledge that we gain during this particular crisis. Sticky institutions, that's also a challenge for the future. And it's the students that we have today that have to make the changes necessary to ensure that we have a governance system that is, that is up to the challenges that we face, not only in a crisis, but also between crises. The Institute uh, came up with a new strategy last year, and uh, it's called uh, Strategy 2030. Exactly, I understand that the uh, University of Oslo will have exact the same time horizon for its uh, strategy. And of course, we chose 2030 as a time horizon exactly because we wanted to have a strategy that's, that is aligned with UN Agenda 2030 and a strategy that can be inspired by UN strategy, UN Agenda 2030. And our mission says that we are advancing knowledge about life, that's basic science, but we have in our mission also a sentence saying that we should strive towards better health for all. And all is this magic word that we have to convey to all our students that as a university, it's even in our name, we must work across borders, that means globally, across social divides, we have to look for equitable health. And across generations, we have to look for sustainable health. And if there's something that is, I guess, something that we have to regret as universities, is that we haven't really taken the time dimension seriously. We have been looking at the global aspects of our health. Certainly, we have gone back in history to understand how health has developed, but we haven't really been looking sufficiently into the future of health will de develop given the challenges that we face today. So last year, we uh, had a major conference at the KI with more than 500 students from all over Sweden. And the title of this conference was exactly 
uh, what uh, was alluded to previously, rethinking higher education inspired by the sustainable development goals. And um, we had several very distinguished speakers there, including uh, Helen Clark, previous prime minister of uh, New Zealand and head of uh, UNDP. And uh, what we was were focusing on in this particular seminar was how to integrate SDGs into the curriculum. And this is a major challenge. We again have to be humble because this has to compete with all other very, very important goals for a curriculum. So uh, it's really, I must say, an effort that we should not underestimate to get SDGs appropriately into the curriculum. Uh, there are three levels of education, of course. Uh, Frank's commission from 2010 uh, describes this uh, in a very elo uh, eloquent fashion. We have the informative aspect of education, that's easy, and much of it can be gained through the internet nowadays. We have the formative level of education where values are taken into account. We know that uh, information has, has no relevance unless the information is based on uh, core values that we all adhere to. And then we have the important level that the SDGs address and that this new center addresses, and that is the transformative element, where we have to educate students that uh, will be the leaders of tomorrow that can serve as change agents, which are very much needed in order to meet ambitions in the SDGs. Again, I would say that university have, and universities have learned to transcend geographical boundaries. We are very good at that but we are not as good when it comes to taking into account the uh, responsibility that we have for future generations. In fact, I must say that uh, I'm not that proud when I look back at the history of universities over the last century. We have to change this. In uh, a chapter that uh, Abin and uh, Anna Wahlberg and I <coughs> submitted uh, just a while ago, and it's in print now, we look exactly at this. How does history tell, tell us about the responsibility that we have to take on today when it comes to the SDGs and the agenda of 2030? If we could compress time as we have to do as universities, to see how history translates into the future, we have to take responsibility for what we call counter innovations. It's a new term that we devised for this particular uh, chapter. For instance, from academia came penicillin, came uh, the green revolution. What we see now is that these innovations, fantastic innovations, they also give us challenges in the time to come. And then as I see it, it is over responsibility to come up with what we call counter innovations. For, for example, for example, to look at uh, antibiotic resistance, which was predicted by Sir Alexander Fleming already in 1945. What uh, are we up to at this moment at KI? And uh, I have just two more slides now. The first thing is to see how we can translate what we're talking about now in more abstract terms into a concrete project. So we are developing a center of excellence for sustainable health with Makarea University in Uganda and other sub-Saharan universities to see if you could come up with new modes of international co cooperation, again, inspired by the SDGs, with reverse innovation, with attention to socioeconomic, commercial, and political determinants of health, and also with a focus on how to go from science to policy. That is very much needed. And we have an MOU now with WHO that uh, is focusing on exactly this, how to move from science to policy. We need comprehensive and sustainable healthcare services. And um, we also have now established an interdisciplinary resource group that couples together all the disciplines that we have at KI to see how we can think and act horizontally across sectors, across disciplines, across all the different uh, areas of research that are required to help us meet the ambitions in the SDGs. And also, of course, there is no way that we can succeed with horizontal thinking in academia, unless we also encourage horizontal thinking and cross-sectoral agency at the national level. And I'm so happy that in Sweden now, we managed to get together 
five very important committees in the Riksdagen in the Swedish parliament to discuss mental health, the future challenges relating to mental health. This is cross-sectoral governance for health being played out in the Swedish parliament. And I'm, I'm here now giving in the Swedish parliament on this picture, the introduction to this uh, very, very important and rare meeting, I would say, because it's very rare that all these committees meet. Uh, we have much to build on at KI. Uh, we have uh, the highest share of sustainable development goal related publications, according to Stint. 73% of all the papers are related to, to SDG, SDG3. And yesterday I got uh, a mail from the CEO of Elsevier saying that according to their statistics, we contribute significantly to SDG3, good health and well-being. Uh, only UCL, they say, is uh, in front of us in Europe when it comes to this particular goal. So the last slide, summary. What are we doing now at KI and what should we do, I think, more uh, generally in the academic world? We should couple local, local sustainability efforts to the global one to have a mutual inspiration between the two. We are now establishing a professorship in global uh, transformation for health. And we are ad advocating for what we call universal preparedness for health across all different boundaries, including generational boundaries. And for this, we need education for sustainable health. Thank you for your attention.